In this video, we're going to look at exact and inexact differentials. Now, uh, what do we mean by these terms? So let's consider that we have some function f. Let's say we have a function f that's a function of x and y, right? Um, and let's say that we can get a total differential for this uh, function df, right? So if you were to integrate over this differential, so let's say we were to integrate over this differential from some initial f, f1 to some final f2, df, right? Um, if this integral is equal to the difference between f2 and f1, this is what we call an exact differential, right? If this integral of the total differential, so if this integral of this property only depends on the limits of integration, then that means that this is an exact differential. Anything, any property that follows the, this, um, this and is an exact differential, we call these state functions. Right, so a state function is just simply something that depends on the initial and final state of that function only and doesn't depend on the path that it takes to get there. And you're actually already familiar with a few variables uh, that are state variables that correspond to state functions. So take something like volume, right? If you're looking for the difference in volume, then that's going to be a state property, right? Whatever your initial and final volume is, the change in volume is just going to be the difference. Whatever your initial or final volume is, minus what the initial volume was. It doesn't depend on the path that it takes to get there. Um, there are going to be some properties that we encounter in thermodynamics that are, that are not state functions and that will depend on the path that it takes to get there. So in those cases, right, if we were to integrate from F1 to F2 of DF, if this is not an exact differential, then that means that this will not be equal to F2 minus F1. So if this is not the case, then this is what we call an inexact differential, right? In the case where this integration over the total differential of this property does not give you just the difference in the limits of integration, this would be an inexact differential. And they're going to have their own unique properties that we'll have to take into account, right? So we'll encounter a few uh, properties like this in thermodynamics that correspond to inexact differentials. So the question is, how do we know whether something is an exact or, dif or inexact differential? Um, how can we actually determine this? Well, uh, this is where it'll be useful for us to evaluate the total derivative. Right, so if we're taking again this function f, that's a function of x and y, we can write out a total differential, right? Let's do it. So our total differential would just be df dx at constant y dx plus df dy at constant x dy, right? So this will be our total differential for f, right? Uh, so what we can do is say, okay, well, this guy is a function um, that depends on X and Y, right? We'll call this guy M, right? So this is some function M that depends on X and Y. And same thing here, we'll call this guy N. So this is some function N that depends on X and Y. And so we can rewrite the total differential in the following form where we'll have M DX plus N dy right so i re-express this because you know you'll you'll take that derivative and you'll end up with some function that's a function of x and y right so uh what we're going to do here is do a test for exactness and the way that we're going to test for exactness we're going to make use of a property of uh exact differentials where their mixed partial derivatives should be equal so what i'm saying here is that for a, a an exact differential if you were to take the second derivative and do dx dy, that should be equal to the second derivative doing the opposite way, doing the opposite um, order, right? dy dx here. So these mixed partials should be equal to one another, right? So what does that mean for you um, 
kind of mechanically here, right? You, once you take this first derivative, if you take the derivative with respect to the opposite variable for each one of these functions that you get, you should get the exact same answer, right? So in this case, what you would do is take the derivative of M, right, with respect to Y, and that should be equal to the derivative of N with respect to X, right? These two should be equal. If they are equal, if this is true, then you have an exact differential. And that means if you were to integrate, you would just it would just depend on the limits of integration. And if this is not true, then you have an inexact differential. And that means that it will be dependent on the path and not just the limits of integration. So let's look at an example. Um, let's look at our good old ideal gas law. So we know for the ideal gas law, the pressure would just be equal to NRT over V, right? This just comes from the ideal gas law, the pressure. So uh, what we can do is actually write out the total differential for pressure at varying temperature and volume, right? So we know that this tells us that pressure is a function of temperature and volume, right? So if I were to write out the total differential, then the total differential would look like this. We'll have dP dt at constant V dt, oops, plus dP dV at constant T dV, right? This will be the total differential with respect to pressure. And so from this, all we would need to do is take the necessary partial derivatives of the ideal gas law in order to build up the total differential. So total differential here, uh, if we take the derivative with respect to temperature, that's just going to give us nr over v dt. Plus, if we take the derivative with respect to, uh, to volume, right, we're going to end up with a negative out front here. So we end up with negative nrt over v squared dv, right? So this is our total differential for pressure as a function of temperature and volume given the ideal gas law. So if we want to test to see if the ideal gas pressure is an exact or inexact differential, then what we're going to have to do here is now that we have this function, we're going to want to, uh, these two functions, I should say, uh, we're going to want to differentiate this first function with respect to volume, right? Because it was first differentiated with respect to temperature. We want to differentiate that guy with respect to volume and this guy with respect to temperature. And if they're equal, then it is an exact differential. So we want to differentiate with respect to volume, this function nr over v, right? Because it was first differentiated with respect to temperature. Now we're going to do volume. And in the other case, uh, this was already differentiated with respect to volume. Now we want to do temperature. So we're going to do ddt of nrt over v squared, negative nrt over v squared, right? So if we take the derivative here, we have to do the, uh, the you know, power rule here to get, the, to get negative nr over v squared. And then here, the temperature just drops out, so you end up with negative nr over v squared. And look at that, we have both of these equal, right? We do end up with the exact same expression, so this guy would be an exact differential. Right, and every property that we're going to look at in thermodynamics is going to correspond to either an exact or inexact differential, and that's going to affect the properties um, and how we actually evaluate those functions. So this is a key uh, cornerstone uh, uh, topic to be able to understand before you start doing thermodynamics.